I'd like to introduce you to the strange and bizarre world of Unicode. Uh, and I would like to show you what we mean by decoding Unicode at, our, uh, at the University of Applied Science in Mainz, Germany. Uh, Unicode is a technical standard. It's an encoding standard for characters. So to see the scope of the subject, we had the idea to uh, produce, to design and print a poster to see each and every character of Unicode on it. So we quite realized that this poster wouldn't be very small. And so we ended up with this poster of 1 meter 70 by 1 meter 20. And this is the software developer, uh, Wenzel Spingler, in the printing office, in the printing shop, looking if each character is on the right place. <laughs> so the first edition sold out very quickly, so we had a second version, some kind of to-go version, so wherever you are in the world, <laughs> you're never lost. Um, so um, have you ever asked yourself, how does it work? You push the key A on your keyboard, and at the under, other end of the world, somebody sees the same Latin capital letter A on his screen, or on her printer. Well, we all know computers don't speak German, they don't speak English, they, don't no they know nothing about Chinese, they only know this binary digits. So basically, when you send a text message or an email, you send a short string of binary digits. So it's seven in this case, so it's seven bit. So this is the basic of encodings. Uh, and the most famous one is ASCII, ASCII. American Standard for Coded Information Interchange. It has its birthday uh, right now, this year. It was invented by Bob Beamer, one of my favorite heroes, uh, who worked at IBM with his team, and uh, he invented uh, this stuff. Uh, so here you see the 128 characters of ASCII. The first two rows uh, are no typographic characters. These are just uh, codes to communicate between uh, the machines. So you have to imagine in the 60s a computer where this beautiful machines uh, filling whole rooms and on this uh, photo we witnessed the marriage of the computer and the typewriter. This was something new. You could, couldn't store just numbers, you could store text on these machines. So um, this is a very simple scribble for a great idea which was only possible thanks to ASCII. Um, it's the first sketch for the internet, called ARPANET, the first uh, version of this. This were four, uni four universities, UCLA, UC Santa Barbara, Stanford Research, and Utah in the circles. These four universities linked together in 69, and they had this 360 is this uh, IBM machine I, saw, uh, I showed you in the slide before. So they link together. So if you want to communicate, you have to use the same code. They were speaking ASCII. Today, we all are using ASCII for the internet. So it's a real great thing. It's a real big invention. Uh, perhaps it's everywhere. It's on your PC, it's on your Mac, it's on your tablet, it's on your smartphone. It's very ubiquitous. Uh, perhaps it's as ubiquitous as the DNA, but there's one problem. You can speak only English and type only English text with it. So the idea became very clear at the end of the 80s to enlarge the scope, uh, to put much more uh, characters uh, in it. So it's 16-bit, so there's much more space. And it was uh, Joe Becker at Xerox Park who had the idea with some colleagues from Apple uh, to, to put much more characters in a bigger uh, encoding. And this is Unicode in 1991. The Unicode standard is published by the Unicode Consortium. And the Unicode Consortium, these are all the IT players, Apple, Google, Sun, Microsoft, IBM, and so on. They are all, the, all behind it. So thanks to Unicode, today on your computer, on your smartphone, you can use these beautiful characters like the Greek uh, capital letter delta, or like the Cyrillic letter D. Uh, you can type the beautiful uh, Arabic um, letters like this one called Sheen. Uh, 
um, you even have all the um, different Indic scripts. There are nine different Indic scripts. They are all encoded in Unicode. So it's a very democratic uh, idea to have all these different cul um, cultures encoded in, in one thing. Um, and even all these characters are in there. This one is meaning cherry, cherry blossom. Uh, this is one of the thousands and thousands of Chinese characters, which lead us to the question, how many characters there are? Well, with the latest edition of uh, Unicode 6.0, the latest major release, there are 109,242 characters encoded right on your computer. Um, so then we put up a website uh, with each and every character um, so that you can see the character. We, we generate an image so that you can see the character even uh, if you haven't got the appropriate font. So this website, decodeunicode.org, uh, is composed of 100,000 web pages. But perhaps the best way um, to understand Unicode is to hold it in your hands. So uh, two years ago, Ziri Poarangang and I published a book with all these different characters in it. It's partly German, partly English. So you have all the characters, and beneath you have the Unicode, uh, so you can find it to use it on your computer. Uh, we did 100 extra pages in color, where we uh, present and discuss some uh, um, um, funny, important, weird, uh, special characters. Um, and uh, we, we put in even all the Chinese characters, um, and the Chinese characters, there were so many that we had to put them, print them on Bible paper so that the weight of the book came below two kilograms. <laughs> so this is the book. Uh, there are more than 600 uh, pages, and it is composed of 66 different fonts because there's no pan Unicode font. You have to collect this, uh, these fonts. This was the the most difficult part uh, of the job. Even uh, there were some uh, 150 characters. We had to draw ourselves to put them uh, into the book. So meanwhile, Unicode became a real success story. Uh, Mark Davis, the president of Unicode last year, he proudly published this graph that more than 60% of all web pages uh, are now encoded in Unicode. And if you add good old ASCII on the right, um, which is now a subset of Unicode, there are more than 80% of web pages now encoded, and you see the slope of the curve of the other ones. So you can say uh, the world is speaking with one code, so that's fantastic, but there are still two problems we have to solve in the next years, in the upcoming years. The first one is this. You know this problem? <laughs> it's the missing fonts. So, dear Apple, dear Google, dear Microsoft, dear Linux, please give us the missing fonts. Please put this font, fonts in the next version of your operating system so that everybody with the next update can use all these different characters. Be <laughs> Because there are some so-called minority uh, scripts, like this one, it's called Bamum. It's used in the Cameroon in Africa. And if you haven't the right font or encoded uh, your writing system, you can't access the, uh, the internet, so the, the, the global society. For example, here we have two of those beautiful, uh, fresh African uh, characters. So we need to put them uh, on our computers so that these cultures can access um, their, own, uh, their own scripts, their own text. So for me, Unicode is not just a technical uh, invention. It's even more a huge cultural achievement. Um, and of course, there are these machines, uh, the smartphones, could become more important than the personal computer and the tablets and so on. So uh, of co imagine you couldn't use your own letters on these machines to access 
uh, to the world and to type your characters. So, um, but it's um, quite uh, simple now that uh, we can produce these virtual keyboards because um, before there were only these keyboards in plastic and Apple or Microsoft would not never produce a keyboard for Cherokee which, uh, where there are only, th uh, I think, 30,000 speakers and uh, writers, but um, a virtual keyboard uh, is much easier uh, to produce. So we need all these keyboards. This is not just a technical thing, it's an access to the world. And the second problem is this, the second thing to do in the next uh, years, it's the missing scripts. There are still some scripts missing um, and we, we have to encode them. So one thing what you can do is to write a proposal and to send it to the Unicode consortium to get it in in the next version. Or you could support the script encoding initiative of the linguist Dr. Deborah uh, Anderson in Berkeley. She's working with many other people very hard to get these things encoded in the next version of Unicode. And just imagine one day Unicode become the collection of all characters of mankind. And there are these ones, ancient scripts like cuneiform. Um, this character uh, is 5,000 years old, but still, even today, you can recognize uh, what it means. It's, it's a pictogram for star, and it's an ideogram for God or heaven. And it's a sound for the syllable an. So you could ask yourself why we should encode even those ancient scripts. Well, the answer is very simple. If we scan all the books of mankind, we can't ignore the old text from Sumerian and Babylonian. The first uh, text of mankind, the first poetry, is the Epic of Gilgamesh, and it was written in uh, cuneiform. So we have to encode it. We have to design a fonts. We did this fonts uh, at our university uh, with the help of Andrea Krause and Stefan Pott. And it's, it's great because you can even copy and paste it. Scientific people, <laughs> they use it. They, do, they are doing full text search. They can paste it in their documents, in their papers. And I'm sure in some years they will have even send text message with cuneiform. <laughs> So, and the last thing uh, where it is really, really unlimited is when these guys come up, uh, the emojis from Japan, there was a big debate inside the Unicode community whether we should encode uh, stuff like this uh, because they are quite funny, but it's a world standard, yeah? Should we encode this? And you, you know what? People are using them like crazy. Um, just to show you one of these emojis, um, I heard that in Japan, uh, um, in school, they got this character uh, if they have a good school grade. So they sent them to their parents to say, hey, I've got a real good school grade. So perhaps Unicode is some kind of globalization of typography, and perhaps other cultures like us could use these characters, you have them right on your computer, you just have to find them, find them. Uh, could use them for other things. So to conclude, I want to show you um, a, a short video, if it works. It starts with ASCII. So it was some side product of the book to say we could encode a film with all these characters. So here you see the Latin ones. This is the phonetic alphabet.
if there's a dotted circle, that means there's a base character and you put on top, you could put on top some accent or stuff. Here are the famous Greek and Coptic characters. Cyrillic. Cyrillic supplement. They f they forgot some some characters. <laughs> Armenian. Hebrew. The accents of Hebrew. Now the Hebrew characters. And their brothers, the Arabic characters. So, this goes on for a while, <laughs> uh, so I will skip to, let's say, the next 10 minutes, I try, and we're on with the Chinese characters. And unfortunately, we don't have enough time to show you, to, to show you all. Um, you can see this uh, film at vimeo.com. Um, if you would take the time to see everything, it would take you two hours and 31 minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much.